middle school, I the child school. And then I didn't do a lot with it. I was just kind of kind of piqued my interest. We didn't, I didn't think our program was pretty good, I guess. Not that much. But anyway, um, once we went on the Grand Yard side, it would be a great time to move in and sorry, stop doing it. So I've taken a lot of technology classes here at Grand I took my freshman year, I took technical, technical drawing and intro to computer science. And then my sophomore year, I took the intro to game design and technical. Junior year, I simply did AP computer science and didn't have any um, more of the engineering side of the courses. And then now I'm here. And I'm also employed at Sprouts Farmers Market. I actually think I've seen at least one of you there because a lot of your kids have come in there. And so anyway, um, it looks like the core of my screen is cut off, but I do have this logo that's been sitting up, that will be sitting up there. And I'll talk about my company as well. And so, my company is the Combining Creativity Company. And I really have three parts to my, um, my, my company. I have the, um, the blue part, so the, the three circles here, they're all, all right. connected to each other and represent three different aspects, although my product only focuses on the first one. So the blue is really about recreating the first part of what my, what my, what my company yes. yeah, sorry. So what I want my company to do is really kind of, you know, recreate things and then, like, in other systems, usually a personal computer, to recreate them and then create, add new stuff onto it, and then and then finally create tools so others can do the same. Um, I suppose it focuses on video games, so I suppose theoretically you can do something as well. So my focus mainly for my project mainly focuses on this recreate part. One second. Um, I get that. So what is my project exactly? Well, it has three parts to it. The first part is the program, and I want to recreate the, um, a series by Pikmin on the PC, and then. My goal really is to have this kind of, it's more of a proof of concept. So I have this the basics of the game. And I want to have a music part. I just wanna I haven't really done any work with music before, so I just wanted to learn how to do it in a single chat that could accompany my game. And the last part is the modeling. I want to have a model of the series main character. His name is Ulamar, and this is what he looks like. Um, you can't really tell from here, but he's actually just following the quarter. Something about the series. And speaking of the series, um, what what is this Pikmin that I speak of? Um, so what it is, it's a real-time strategy, which means you have a bunch of small little units, and you go around and you try and multitask and plan and accomplish things. And that's why I really like it, because those are the things I really like doing. And so you collect and you grow these Pikmin, and here are Pikmin types. There are nine. And so, like as you can see, the part plants, you actually grow them up, and that's why it's why I thought the name both was fitting, because it's about pigment and growing. And I'm growing as a person too. So here are my five projects. Um, those are my advisors in the corner. They're Skyping me right now. But I'll get to them when I get there. So my five project goals. Uh, my first one is to learn about C++ and object or in functional programming. So I so in these programming classes I took at Grandview, um, we learned about job, which is really object oriented. So you have an object and then you give it functions and it does things. So functional programming is really more about just having functions and then those apply to objects that you define. And my second one is to, um, is to create this code structure for video games. So Unreal, or... So, I mean, because I really like um, the community games, I've never, again, done it before. So at least kind of improve my coding experiences to create something that more complex than what I've done. And then I want to, um, and I also want to uh, make a 3D model, because there's a lot of steps to making a 3D model. It's not just, like, it's not like play where you just make it and then, or it actually is kind of like when you make it and you have to fire it, so. So it's pretty complicated. It has a lot of steps as well. And then I also want to explore about creating music, because, um, again, it's something I haven't done before. It's not just about you know making notes because if you have a bunch of notes mashed together, no one's going to like it. So it's not just about making music. And, making it sound good. and then the last, my last goal is um, it's almost some kind of plan. It's just about implementing the design ideas I've had for a long time, and that's not kind of like actually the most important. Goal. So if we go back to this slide, I want to focus mostly on this image. So 
I'm actually a lion, so I'm on seven, throw out nine pipes, I'm on the seven. I made these drawings myself, and it made this, oh, this is the one, or this one cut off, unfortunately. I made this type and another one myself. They're original creations. And that's, so, I really enjoy this kind of stuff, and this is really hard to spend my free time. And so maybe it seemed kind of weird that I'm focusing a lot on all this stuff, but there's a big reason for it. And that is because I have Asperger's syndrome. And if, I'm guessing most of you haven't heard what that is, and it has been recently been reclassified, you know, perhaps it's not familiar this way, as a form of autism. But really, it's not that bad. I mean, I'm here, and I'm doing pretty well. And mostly, so um, it comes in the, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Get rid of that. So um, anyway, and it mostly comes in the form of social disorder. I have a lot of problems with um, communicating with people and speaking from large groups. You know, that's why I'm here, right? Sorry about that. And so anyway, um, so how am I going to make this project? I have three main classrooms. I originally said to use three different programs, one for each. So programming, I'm going to use the Un I was going to use the Unreal Engine, um, which is a kind of a game physics engine, and then you can add on to it. It's pretty useful in terms of being a game engine because making the game engine is really like really complex, and so it's a good basis. In the modeling, I was going to use Maya. Um, Maya is really high end. Um, so with the programming part, um, it turns out that it's not just Unreal, but rather um, Unreal partners itself with Visual Studio by uh, Windows or by Microsoft. And so that's kind of where the coding part comes in. But it also winds up restricting my options because I was, this, uh, Visual Studio isn't very flexible and, and it only works with Unreal only with Visual Studio is working. So on the modeling part, I wanted to use Maya, which is a pretty high-end modeling program. And so it's not very beginner friendly, but I thought, you know, that's okay, I can just take it on. Um, it didn't work out quite as well as I'd hope, and I'll get to that when I get to my Roblox section. So I cut it out and I put it in with Blender. Um, one of my, it's used by a lot of people. One of my advisors suggested it to me. And it, it, I had a lot more success with it. And then lastly for composing, so I didn't don't know a lot about composing, and one of my advisors was did suggest that I use this. It's called the Fruit Loop. But um, shortly after I figured, shortly after I committed to it, he was just like, I might try this out, and it doesn't work very well. So I wound up switching to Mute Store, which is um, much better. And actually, I know someone else who is one of my advisors, but he doesn't know a lot about Mute Store. He would help me out. So anyway, um, who are my advisors that I'm speaking about? So one of them is Andre Sarver. He is a software engineer at Fathom, and if you've never heard of it, I'm not surprised, because it's based in Portugal. Um, thanks to the lovely powers of the internet, I would meet up with him. He's also, um, he's also really into Pikmin. He's created something <coughs> that he's on his own for it. And he's been employed there for eight years, so it's, I really kind of want to spell the notion that the internet is bad. And the other one, his name is Bra Max Bradley. And it's gonna sound kind of weird, but he's a college student. But here I have some of his work. I think it's really impressive. And he really does know a lot about modeling and about music. So I thought he was pretty perfect. And, last, and then I have my support advisor. So I have Tim Fournay. He's a senior of Photoshop Robotics. If that name sounds familiar, it's, um, it's in the back. He does some senior projects. And he took the project last year. So he was really, helping, help, really able to help guide me when I got lost near the beginning of the year because I wasn't sure what I was doing. And then I also have Jason Maddy, he is another student in the class. He did a video game as well, as I'm sure many of you have gotten to play it. And that's kind of why he's really good at it, so he can help me out with the, um, the video game part. And then I also have Braden Moore, he's zero of Mark Light, and therefore also a student in the class. And I've known him since first grade, and he's really smart and could help me out a lot. And lastly, I have a student, Emma Smith. He could not be in the room because he's, he's a huge teacher here at Gandhi, has a classroom. But he's really a great guy, you know, great moral support, and he's pretty much against himself. And then, so for my research, so I'm with programming, like I said, I'm going to try and learn um, C, which is more, which I thought was more functional programming, but really it's a lot like Java, which is, so it's really object based. But there was something that I didn't think about for, um, when I was starting out, which is that 
Um, Unreal has a lot of its own code that uses the communicate between my code and the physics engine to make everything work. And, and so um, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot going into this that C++ didn't have really have. And then I originally had an idea for pathfinding, but um, as I've talked about later, I don't need to get to that part of the project. So here I have some examples of code. This is in Unreal. So I have here a bunch of different functions and stuff. And yeah. So um, for the music part, um, I don't know what sheet music. The program I use, MuseScore, um, it does things through sheet music. And I haven't played any instruments, so I don't really know anything about, I didn't know anything about sheet music before I came to the project. And so um, really, it's actually quite simple. So here we have some scale. So the note, you know, the ring really being left last you took, or, yeah. The notes, it's really different by the vertical position. And then um, different types of notes and other position, um, more than just about the length. So these are all quarter notes, which means they're quarter of a whole note. And the length of a whole note is going to be based on um, time of signature, which is something I didn't really want to worry about. So I use this more standard time signature. And so with the modeling part, um, it's really different from well, SAR, which is what, you, uh, what I use in my engineering courses. And it's really, so it's not mathematical at all. You don't, there's almost no numbers involved. Like there's some parts where you can't use numbers, and it's, it's not an option. And so um, I want to start by making a simple model. And so um, it's kind of what I have. As you can kind of see, you just have the axes here, and you can um, do lots of things with the faces. And I have keyboard shortcuts here because um, because a lot of really is pretty really intuitive once you get used to it, and a lot of things about the keyboard shortcuts. So, like if someone was really good at it, you can see them type in a bunch of keys, and then like they'd have a model, and then you wouldn't really know what's going on. But that's it. And then so the process is really that difficult. You know, you take a part, then you shape it, and then you do just add on and on to it. And so it's not complicated, but it's, it takes a long time. And when I get to my time, I can kind of explain that more. And some roadblocks. Um, the problem that I have somewhat frequently, I'm not sure if it's quite linked to the disorder or not, but sometimes when I get stuck, I get like really stuck, and whatever I think of come out of it is really a solution. So like here, um, I, was, I got, so a lot of the problems with Unreal is that their code isn't well documented, and so I wasn't really, and documentation is basically tells you what the code is and how to use it. And so I was having a lot of trouble trying to figure out how to use it. And so my, my solution was just, you know, keep researching, and then you get to the end eventually. And that was really working out. I actually wound up having a meeting and we got some more direction, but I kind of lost, I lost a lot of time on my timeline. And so with the modeling, um, Violet, did, like I said, it's really not beginner friendly. So as you can see, there are a lot of tools here. And then so this, this is the, I was trying to make the same shape that we saw in the previous uh, rendering thing, the, the, the hexagon and all. And that's kind of the problem I was having was I couldn't even get the hexagon form because it's on a, where you create a pyramid and then it doesn't really let you change it much. I don't quite understand it myself. That's why I switched. Um, oh yeah, so this is the part I was trying to make. It was a chaos emerald from another video series. And so for my timeline, um, my original plan in October was to just learn C++ and then go ahead and like get really into the programming part, but that didn't work out very well. And so I did learn C++, so again, it's a lot like Java. And then, but then I got into learning on Unreal and it really lost a lot of time. So I lost this week and it lost um, more time here. So I kind of wanted to get through, um, not just having to make a move, but having to get objects, go back to base, and more of them. But then I ended up kind of being knocked out. I lost a large amount of motion to this. And then I only got part of the way through having them follow the camera around because of the budget for this I was having. And then, so what my original plan in December was to just go straight into making music because I figured I'd have a lot of progress in my programming. And then, so that really happened. Day three, okay, go ahead. And so what I'm about to have is that. Um, push the music to the second semester and we went back for the second semester. It's when, it seems kind of weird that I have 
two months of using the screen. But then, like I said, it's Mark with Marlene. Um, we want to jump into the next semester, and that's what I want to do. So music will be done at the class. And so we kind of started off with Maya. I kind of you know, got a bad start. But really, um, we just switched to Blender, and it really picked up after that. So something else I, I didn't think about before, right? I didn't know about trying to do some research, was that for drawing a human, it's really good to do like orthographic drawing. So you have a front view, then a side view, then a top view. And then you can use that to make the to model the shape in 3D as you want. And so once I had those, once I had switched to Blender and had this going on, and really picked up from there, so I actually got ahead of my time after the second semester. So like all through April and March, I kind of got ahead. I didn't wind up finishing the hands through the time constraints through the end of the year, but the model was supposed to finish. And these good parts. And so here's um, my final self in terms of modeling. I have his head here. Then here I have the rest of his spacesuit and his helmet and nothing. <laughs> and so um, I don't have to see together because doing so, like the head inside of here, you wouldn't be able to see it. Um, there is a way to get around that, and it's if you once you get to the texture and you save your modeling, it's like hers after you make the shape. Um, if you make the camera transparent, but I didn't plan on getting that far, and as you can see, I didn't. So I wasn't really worried about it. That's what it makes. And then with the music, so I did compose a track like I wanted to, and I have it here. I was going to play it for you guys. Real quick there, then. So you went from Maya to Blender. When did that happen, and why did you make that choice to switch? Um, so I was talking to one of my advisors. Um, we do mid-year meetings with our advisors, and so I was talking with him about how I was working out for the He's like, "Why well, just like do a short tutorial? If you like it, then maybe we can keep doing it in the future." And so that's what I did. That was on the 11th of February, and. Like I, I got really excited once, once you just showed me that. Because it, it was really easy. Like, I mean, um, I'll take it back to the, the, the this. I made that 10 minutes. With the Maya, when I was, you know, of the month, and I didn't get past here. So, it was 
we were just um, it kind of like compared to learning how to swim. Like learning how to like starting projects where modeling in Maya is like learning how to swim in the deep end. Like you're going through the drown, but you don't actually learn any faster. Okay. Any other questions? Are you going to continue this over the summer? Are you going to try to finish up? What are you going to do? Yeah. Well, maybe not for the program exercise. I, mean, I think it might just be unreal, but I don't know. Okay. But yeah, I'll definitely do more music, and I'll definitely probably do more modeling. Good. All right. Well, good. Thank you.